Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be a book haul. So I did get several books for you know, not only Christmas, but also my birthday. And then I've obviously like bought more for myself. <laughs> we'll do a couple of non-book, but bookish related things first. So Nikki from Books and Lemon Squash bought me this cute little pen. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Princess Leia reading a book and I was like, I found this on Amazon and put it on my wish list because I thought it was absolutely adorable. And Nikki bought it for me for my birthday. So that was very sweet of her, but I just absolutely love this. Um, ow. We'll just kind of put that. Oh dear. Ivy's brother and his wife got some bookish related things for me. So we have these really cute dog bookmarks. They're like little magnetic ones. So hopefully, you know, we can, we can see all of them. I'll just kind of like slowly pen that up. Um, but they're super cute and I, I, don't, I feel like this one is probably my favorite of them, but they're all pretty adorable. So we'll just kind of put that back there. And then they also got me this, you know, book, well, it's, it's technically a planner. But there's little drawings throughout of various cute books and, you know, I think I'm going to use this to, I mean, it's like there's different tabs and everything just like, <laughs> I'm trying to throw this on the ground. There's different illustrations throughout of, you know, not only books, but also, also authors and stuff. So I think I'm probably going to use this for planning out booktube things and just there's areas so you can like, like books to read, books you've read, which I don't think are going to be quite enough space in terms of the the books read. I'll try to like smush it in. But yeah, I think I'm going to use this planner for more book related things, but it's super cute. So the first thing I'll talk about is this gigantic set. Um, this is the full collection. It's really heavy. Um, so this is the all six volumes of Lock and Key. So Ivy got me this for Christmas. And like I said, I mean, it's like ridiculously heavy. So these are Let's see if I can even get the first one out of here. So we'll pull the first volume out so I don't have to hold all of this, but this is obviously a graphic novel series by Joe Hill, and I don't know that much about it other than there's like some siblings and some sort of mansion that has different doors to different realities or something like that. You know, it, it mentions here this key house, this is the mansion with fantastic doors that will that transform all who dare walk through them and home to a hate-filled and relentless creature that will not rest until it forces open the most terrible door of them all. So I've heard good things about this in general. You know, I have heard it's pretty dark and brutal, but I'm really excited to read it. And I've been meaning to watch the show for a while. So like, I definitely want to read this first before getting into that. I think most of these other gifts are fantasy, so we'll dive into that. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is The Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. So this was a gift from Lena, from Sufficiently Advanced Lena for my birthday. And this is the second novel, I guess, in the Tearling series. So I'm super excited to continue it. I, Kat from Bruise and Reviews and I read the first one in like November or December or something like that and really enjoyed it. So I think we both want to continue the series while it's still kind of fresh in our minds. And I, I believe Lena said that the second one is her favorite. So this is actually interesting because I had thought it was just like a high fantasy, but it seems based on the first one to be kind of like it's it's set in our world so it's i guess like an urban fantasy but it's different from a lot of urban fantasies that i've read <laughs> so here we have our queen kelsey who is basically having to <laughs> deal with an invasion of her country from this red queen who is this like kind of evil sorceress and i guess ooh, uh, kelsey discovered or develops a mysterious connection to a time before the crossing that sounds really interesting. So maybe we'll learn more about like what has actually happened to this world. And, you know, cause like it does mention things, you know, like Britain and America, something like that. It's like a dystopian future of, of sorts, but yeah, definitely excited to continue this series. The next one I'll talk about is the archive of the forgotten by AJ Hackwith. So this was a Christmas present, I think from my parents trying to remember. And this is the second book in the series. And it's like an urban fantasy series where we've got this library of the unwritten and hell unwritten books just kind of like reside there. And characters from those books can sometimes come to life. And you know, that's, that's a bad thing. So in this particular one, we have these books starting to leak a strange ink. And one of our main characters, Claire, is just realizing, you know, there's more challenges within the library that she must deal with. So we also have Brevity, who is a former muse, and I guess Brevity and Claire are kind of at odds with how to treat this. 
Some of our other characters are searching other realms for the mythical origins of unwritten books, but time is running out. So I really liked the first one and it's just, a, you know, I just really want to continue on with the series. There were a lot of really interesting ideas and sort of like, like a found family aspect. <laughs> the next book I'll talk about is Blood Air by Alona Andrews. And this was a birthday present from Kat from Brisbane Reviews. So this is set in the Kate Daniels world, which is an urban fantasy that's in Atlanta. And it's kind of like the post-apocalyptic sort of setting. And you have like waves of technology and magic. And obviously like during like magic waves, technology doesn't work. So it's a really interesting series and setting. And I like, I really loved the Kate Daniels series. So this one follows Julie, who was Kate Daniels ward. And Julie has left Atlanta eight years ago and now she's back calling herself Aurelia Ryder and she's trying to protect the family she's left behind. An ancient power is stalking her adopted mother Kate Daniels. It's apparently leaving behind a string of horrifying murders and basically you know she is like trying to keep her identity under wraps and she's trying to solve these murders and prevent a prophecy from being fulfilled. But it's like she expected danger, but she never anticipated that the only man she ever loved could threaten everything. So I'm very excited to read this book. What's really cool is Julie has basically an ability to see like the colors of different magic and know like what kind of entity those are coming from, like whether it's like a god magic or, you know, a shifter or vampire, stuff like that. The next book I'll talk about is Lore by Alexander Bracken. So this was a birthday present from Anna Francesca and ooh, things are falling out. So this I think is an urban fantasy. And so it's like every seven years, the Agon begins. And as punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals and they're like being hunted essentially. So Lord Perseus fled this brutal world and turned her back on the hunt's promises of eternal glory after her family was murdered by a rival line. And so basically, I guess the next hunt hat is in New York City and two participants are seeking her out a childhood friend who lore thought was dead and athena who was obviously one of the last original gods who's gravely wounded so they're basically trying to form an alliance against their mutual enemy and a way to leave this agon thing behind forever so i feel like i've seen more mixed reviews of it but it's still like a premise i'm really interested in you know like i obviously love urban fantasy and i really like that this is like some sort of Greek mythology. I don't know if it's necessarily a retelling, but it's somehow involving Greek mythology. And like I've kind of mentioned before on my channel, I really love books that involve, you know, the gods or mythology in some nature. The next one I'll talk about is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This was a birthday present from Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads. This is a cloth brown cover and I made the mistake of like opening the box on the ground. So now it's just covered in Satan's hair. <laughs> so such is life. But this is a love story between a vampire and a werewolf and this is the author who draws like the sarah's scribbles comics and so i think that like okay one also there's like black sprayed edges which is really cool so this is actually like a comic style and i'm really excited for this i you know i've seen i think a little bit of her comics before and think they're pretty funny so you know I, i'm just curious to see what's going on here and obviously, like, it, this seems to be sort of like an urban fantasy, I guess. Damn, and, you know, like, I love vampires and well, werewolves, so what could go wrong? So then we get into, like, the two sci-fi books that were presents for me. And the first one I'll talk about is The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James. So this was a birthday present from Carrie from Carrie Louise Reads. Our two main characters, who are the youngest people on the planet after a virus has caused global infertility, and so, you know, they're in London and basically this small aging community just absolutely adores them. So I guess they're, you know, just kind of being kids and looking for treasure and stuff, but some sort of secret is uncovered that threatens their entire existence. So our characters will have to decide how, what they're willing to sacrifice in order to save the whole human race. So, you know, I really like this cover. It's, it's super pretty and I don't know how well, you know, the, <laughs> the shininess is being conveyed on camera, but I haven't read anything by Lauren James before, but I think these premises are really intriguing. Ooh, 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 hang on. I'm just like flipping through this and it looks like there are, this is maybe some like mixed media formatting. Like this kind of looks like emails or 
news clips or IMs something like that so yeah that's that's even more exciting and then the last I think of the various presents that I've received was The Doors of Eden by Adrian Adrian Tchaikovsky so this was a birthday present from my parents so I think this is a sci-fi book but we have I guess four years ago two, two girls went looking for monsters and only one came back so I guess one of the girl who came back thought she lost her friend but now this friend has miraculously returned and it's like, but what happened on that, on that day? And where has she been this whole time? So the answers will open the door to a world beyond anything either of them might have imagined. So we've, I think, I think this may be like parallel universes, lost world type stuff going on here. I think they were looking for cryptids or something like that. And that was like what really drew me in and got me like super excited about this. Then I have, you know, a couple of I guess more review books to talk about. And the first one I'll talk about here is Proud Fox, which is the fourth book in the Caledon Saga by J.P. Harker. So Kat and I are currently buddy reading this. We're like 200 something pages in. And basically, I mean, this continues the Caledon Saga, obviously, <laughs> but this is like a high fantasy world that's kind of like inspired by like the Romans and the Celts. And in this particular one, we have Elazar, who is a prince of Ushir. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But basically, he has been welcomed in, into the Caledon and has kind of put his, you know, past, I guess, behind him and like doesn't really want anything to do with his family. But trouble is brewing back in his homeland. And, you know, the, the guy and emperor has a war to fight. And so basically... You know, Elazar may be a useful ally or hostage, possibly. The Caledon must choose whether or not they want to get involved in this fight, and Elazar has to decide what he wants to do. So, I mean, this is obviously really great so far. It's gone, like, suspiciously well so far, and I'm just, like, waiting for something terrible to happen to our characters. I can't wait to keep reading it. So I actually did buy the book myself, but I was sent some swag by the author, so I'll show that momentarily. But the book I'll talk about here is The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark. And so this is a horror book. And basically we have our main character, Tim, who has bet everything on a handyman's dream, a quaint but dilapidated farmhouse in New Hampshire. He's newly single after a, a terrible divorce and is trying to restore this house to sell it. But then basically once the papers are signed and his work starts, ghosts start to appear. <laughs> turns to his real estate agent to determine if he's got a shot at like fixing this haunting problem and so they're trying to solve this mystery so I've heard really great things about this book and I'm definitely excited to get to that um I like for some reason didn't notice that this was a woman on the cover I like I don't know what I thought it was <laughs> but I was looking at it the other day and I was like oh my god that is that is like a jawbone right there like what have I been thinking this entire time that this was so anyway <laughs> here's that and then the author back in December sent me some swag to go along with that. So we have this this art print. We've got, you know, some stickers, a, a bookmark, which is pretty awesome. This is, I think, a magnet. I, I don't know where I'm like holding this right now. <laughs> We've got like a book plate and I think another sticker. So a lot of really great swags. So then I ha did win a couple of Goodreads giveaways. The first of them that I'll talk about is the math or is Master of the Rebel by Nicole Gallon. So this is actually the second book after the rise and fall of Dodo, which I have not read. And oh, I don't know. I like may or may not read that. So basically, we, this is some sort of like sci-fi thing, I guess where we have this department of diachronic operations dodo and they're trying to stop some sort of witch from using time travel to reverse the evolution of all modern technology i guess this witch is trying to encrypt cataclysmic spells into shakespeare's cursed play, play macbeth we're forced to send somebody back in time i think to try to stop her this character is posing as an apprentice in shakespeare's globe theater and then we have another character who's traveling to the ancient Roman Empire to kind of deal with, I guess, these knotted threads of, of history while this witch is jumping from timeline to timeline. So, I mean, that sounds actually really awesome. I feel like I had been intrigued by The Rise and Fall of Dodo, but I was a little nervous because I think the first one is co-written with Neil Stevenson, and I'm not sure... I think I had read one of his books before and was like really confused by it. So like I don't know what the style would be having two authors like maybe Nicole Gallen's writing is more like prevalent I guess in the first one. So this sounds intriguing and like I wanted to think in a giveaway so I'm you know definitely excited to try this out. Uh, the, it looks like this particular book comes out in February 2021. 
So then the other book that I wanted a Goodreads giveaway is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lawrence. So this comes out in May this year, it looks like. And this is, that is not a helpful back cover. <laughs> this is obviously a romance and it looks like we have a single mom who is a data and statistics wizard. That is very exciting. She has a seven-year-old daughter and she's kind of been left behind too often to be comfortable like letting anyone in and dating anyone. She hears about Genetic Ally, which is a new DNA-based matchmaking company that's predicted to change dating forever. So then, you know, she's like really comfortable with this idea because it uses like numbers and, and DNA. So she's like, I understand this, but she until, you know, I guess her test shows an unheard of 98% compatibility with another subject, one of the founders of this company, but she already knows this guy. So I guess she's like, how could this be my soulmate? Because he's like super stuck up and stubborn. So then they're like, get to know him and we'll pay you. So she's like, okay, sure. There may be more to the scientists and the science behind a soulmate than she thought. So I've really enjoyed Christina Lauren's writing before. It's a writing duo and their writing tends to be just look really funny. And I generally really enjoy the romance. So I was super excited to you know, win this in a giveaway. So I think the first set of books I'll talk about are actually used books that I bought from my library. They have like a Friends of the, the Bookstore type thing and they have like this online bookstore which is awesome but all proceeds go to you know directly help the library so like I really like that and I was super excited to see all of these books on here because a lot of them are more recent and definitely ones that I'm interested in reading. We have two sci-fi books. The first one is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. So like I'm a little bummed honestly that this is a book of the month edition but again like it was like seven dollars so you know whatever. So this book involves multiverse travel and basically you know people can't visit worlds where their counterpart in this like you know alternate reality or whatever is, is alive but Kara our main character I think has you know died in 372 of these universes so she can travel around quite a bit. But I guess on one particular Earth she survived and has been identified as an outlier and a perfect candidate for multiverse travel. She works with her handler handler to collect off-world data for this institute and basically one of her eight remaining doppelgangers dies under mysterious circumstances and so she's plunged into a new world with an old secret that and what she discovers can, can, will connect her past and future in ways she couldn't have imagined. And there's some sort of plot that endangers not only the world, but the entire multiverse. I've heard, you know, pretty good things about this in general. Like, I remember Amber from Books of Amber saying something along the lines of like, does it really make sense to have just like a limited number of multiverses? Each decision should spawn like an, an infinite number of multiverses, you would think, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. So I'm like, I'm really curious to see just what is going on here, but I've you know, I think in general people tend to like this and I've been wanting to read it for a while. And then the other sci-fi book I brought from them was The Warehouse by Rob Hart. So this seems to be like, we have Cloud, which is a, a giant tech company that's eaten much of the Ameri American economy. It has a lot of fast warehouses. There's a <laughs> bland chain store life of gleaming entertainment halls. It doesn't seem too bad, but I guess we have one character who's infiltrating Cloud to try to ferret out the company's secrets. As the truth about this company unfolds, this character has to gamble everything on a desperate scheme to risk the lives of her and this other character who works for this tech company. They'll learn how far the company will go to make the world a better place. So it seems to be like a sci-fi thriller about what happens when Big Brother meets Big Business and who will pay the ultimate price. So I think I've heard Scott from Book Invasion talk about this and I think he gave it like four stars or something like that. So I, it's not one that I tend to hear about all that often, but it seems, you know, pretty interesting. And it seems like cloud is kind of like an analog of Amazon. So I'm curious to see how this idea is explored. So then I have three thrillers that I bought from the library. And the first of them is Force of Nature by Jane Harper. So this is the second book in, I think, this Aaron Falk series. And I do have the first one that I haven't read, but, you know, I'm assuming that I'm going to like it because I know Amber from Books of Amber really loves it. And we tend to have similar taste stuff. So. You know, I'm assuming I'll enjoy it, but this is a thriller that takes place in Australia, I believe. And we have four co colleagues going on a corporate retreat to the wilderness. One of them doesn't come back out. And each of her companions tells a slightly different story about what happened. So Aaron Falk, who's the federal agent, is like really interested what happened in what happened to this missing hiker because she is the whistleblower in his latest case and she is supposed to help him bring down a comp the company she works for and the people she works with. So 
I guess he discovers secrets lying in the mountains, and there's like this obviously tangled web of personal and professional friendship, suspicion, and betrayal among the hikers. What does it lead to murder? So I'm definitely excited to read this, and you know, like I have now three books by Jane Harper that I need to read. The next book I'll talk about is The End of Her by Sherry Looking at like dog hair floating around. So this, we have a set of parents who are adjusting to life with their colicky twin girls. So the mom, Stephanie, is just, is struggling with the disorientation of sleep deprivation, but she's like, yeah, this is all I, this is, you know, everything I wanted now. But then a woman from her husband's past appears and makes a dis disturbing accusation. His first wife's death, he claims, was an accident, but now this woman is claiming it was murder. So he insists he's innocent. But this woman knows things about Patrick that makes Stephanie, this this mother, begin to question her husband. And so she's not really sure what to believe. I've read a, one book, I think, by Sherry Lapina before. And I think it was an Unexpected Guest, something like that. It was just like a kind of close circle murder mystery, I think, that took place in the winter from what I remember. But I enjoyed it. And I d did find more of her books from... I think a used bookstore that I traded in for credit. So it like her writing definitely works for me. And I, I was excited to see this one on my library's website because this just came out, I think in the summer of 2020. And then the last of these books that I'll talk about is The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. This also just recently came out in 2020. And this is obviously a thriller. And I've read several books by Megan Miranda and generally enjoy her writing. So I was very excited to see this. Our, looks like Arden was six years old when she was swept away while sleepwalking during a rainstorm. She was found alive, clinging, clinging to a storm drain, and so like this, her story has kind of become, you know, like pretty famous. Uh, her mom wrote a book about this, and you know, as soon as she was old enough, Arden changed her name and disappeared from the public eye. But and the 20th anniversary of the rescue is approaching, and so the media has kind of renewed its interest in her, and so she thinks that she's being watched and starts sleepwalking again. And then late one night, she jumps awake in her yard, only to find her feet, find at her feet the corpse of the man of a man she knows from her previous life. And so it's like she's going to become the center of the story once again. So I feel like I've heard pretty good things about this in general, and it seems like a really intriguing premise. So I'm excited to get to it. So then we get into other books that I've bought. A lot of these, you know, I had like gift cards and stuff for my birthday. So and Christmas, I think. So <laughs> we'll get into some of these. We'll start, I think, with the two more horror-related books first. So the first one we'll talk about is The Half Killed by Quinby Olsen. I have seen a lot of really great reviews about this for years, particularly on the fantasy subreddit. So this is actually more of like, I think, Victorian fantasy slash horror. But I think the author has recently had some health troubles with her family. And so, you know, it's like every you know, every every dollar certainly helps. Dorothea, our main character, has no wish to renew contact with what lies beyond the veil. I guess after an attempt to take her own life, she's retired into seclusion, but she's drawn back into a world that she really wants nothing to do with. And so she's sought out by this guy who wants her help in discovering who's behind the gruesome murder of a young woman. But the manner of death is all too familiar to Dorothea, and so she thinks that something terrible is about to unleash itself on London. So she's risking her life and her sanity to try to save people to, who are oblivious to this threat, and it for, forces her into a confrontation with her own past and tests her ability to shape events beyond her control. So again, I've heard really great reviews about this and wanted to support the author. And again, this seems like a premise that I'm really going to enjoy. So and like the cover is really, really cool. So I'm definitely excited to get to this. The other more horror book I'll talk about is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily and Danforth. So this, I think, a horror comedy that's centered around this cursed New England boarding school for girls. And it looks like in 1902, we have two students who are obsessed with this writer. And so they establish their own private club, the Plain Bad Heroine Society, and meet in secret. But then I guess their bodies are later discovered with a copy of this book be right by them. And they were the victims of a swarm of stinging, angry yellow jackets. So then less than five years later, the school closes, but not before three people mysteriously die. So then a century, over a century later, this kind of abandoned place is back in the news because a, a writer publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. And this inspires a horror film adaptation. I think once they like start filming, you know, the past and the present become quickly untangled and 
there's some sort of curse, but I think there are illustrations maybe throughout here. And I've generally heard pretty good things about it. And I'm like definitely intrigued by this like horror comedy premise. We'll get into the sci-fi books. And the first book I'll talk about here is Fear by Michael Crichton. So this, it's like in the middle of the South Pacific, a thousand feet below the surface of the water, a huge vessel is discovered resting on the ocean floor. It's a spaceship. And it seems to be at least 300 years old. And it's like, what's even more fantastic and frightening is what waits inside. So that's all I know about it. And I feel like I heard Ramsey from Rajathon talk about it fairly recently. And by that, I mean, like, sometime in 2020. <laughs> I don't remember when. But it's one of the Michael Crichton books I haven't read before. And I really enjoy his writing. You know, it's a lot of, like, fun sci-fi thrillers. Like, obviously, Jurassic Park is great. And the Andromeda strain is fabulous. So I just want to try out more of his stuff. And Sphere seems pretty appealing to me. I really like that there's something to do with the ocean in here. The next book I'll talk about is Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Timmy O. Oh. So I know Lena from Sufficiently Advanced. Lena really likes this. And I feel like several other people do that I'm completely forgetting. But basically, I think this is more character driven sci fi. But we have you know, over a century ago, an astron astronomer discovered an Earth-like planet orbiting a nearby star. Today, ten astronauts are leaving everything behind to find it. Four are veterans of the 20th century space race, and six are teenagers who have been training for this mission most of their lives. It will take them 23 years to reach Terra 2, locked in close quarters, you know, no one to rely upon but each other, no rescue possible. Should something go wrong? And something always goes wrong. Having everybody within close quarters of each other, it seems to make for some like tense moments. So it seems like a sci-fi that I should enjoy. The last of the sci-fi books I'll talk about is Star Wars The High Republic, Light of the Jedi by Charles, Charles Soule. So this is the first installment of the new High Republic series, which again takes place like thousands, I think years before in like the heyday, I guess, of the Jedi. So we have some sort of catastrophe in hyperspace that's tearing a ship to pieces and the flurry of shrapnel that emerges can threaten or threatens an entire system. So, you know, the Jedi race to the scene and this is somehow pushing the Jedi to their limit. And there's like, you know, destruction raining upon the peaceful alliance. So they have to trust, they'll have to trust in the forces even through a day in which a single mistake could cost billions of lives. Something truly deadly is also growing beyond the boundary of the Republic and there's like some sinister things happening. So I'm assuming that's probably the Sith, but you know, I really enjoy Star Wars. I'm excited for this new era and, and like, you know, very curious to see what all they're going to do here. I do enjoy, you know, the Jedi. So I'm like super excited to read something that like really features them. And I've heard that this one has almost more of a thriller feel to it. So I'm like super curious to see how that goes. <laughs> then we'll get to the fantasy portion of this. And the first book I'll talk about here is Grave War by Kalena Price. So this is, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what entry in the Alex Craft series. It's an urban fantasy series. And this, our main character, Alex, can basically like communicate with the dead and interrogate them to like figure out why they've died. So here, She's forged a truce with the world of the of fairy and is trying to live just like a normal life. But, you know, it's like <laughs> safe to say that stepping up to the lead investigator for the Fae Investigation Bureau was not a career path she ever anticipated taking. There's an explosion that happens that threatens to upend the Fae who make their home in, you know, the human world. So she finds herself in charge of a very far reaching investigation and, you know, she's like just starting out at this. And so she's cut off from half of her allies, dangers mounting, and you know, she'll have to try to like save the day, I think. So I've really enjoyed the series in general. Really like this premise, I think, of like the, the grave witches where, you know, she can talk to dead people, but it also comes with a cost. Like each time she tries to talk to them, it like causes her like temporary blindness, essentially. So she has to deal, there's like definitely a lot of ramifications from using her magic. And I always enjoy, you know, these explorations of like magic coming with a cost. The next book I'll talk about is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagner. So this came in the January, I think, um, Unplugged Book Box. And this is a fantasy where we have a con artist slash partly educated fire witch is behind on her rent again. So she sees this wanted side seeking female persons of martial or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance prior to the celebration of her marriage. So she, you know, gets this job and joins a team of highly peculiar women tasked with protecting their wealthy charge from unknown assassins. This job seems like really easy until t things take a deadly and undead turn. So I guess there's a bird-loving necromancer, a shape-shifting schoolgirl, and an ill-tempered reanimated mouse named Buttons and who like help 
our characters out and they're tr trying to you know get the best of an adversary who wields a twisted magic and has friends in the highest of places so that actually sounds like really appealing i'm very curious to see what this deadly and undead turn you know is about the last of the fantasy books that i'll talk about is the forever sea by joshua philip johnson you have like the forever sea which is a sea of like prairie grasses and you have these like ships that sail upon this and so our main character's grandmother who's a legendary captain has stepped from her vessel and disappeared into the sea and there's like something that waiting in the depths that this grandmother has like set out to find so our main character you know is dealing with a water war simmering below the surface of two cultures like a mythic pirate city battles against beasts of the deep driven to the brink of madness and the elusive promise of a world below the waves so I was like very intrigued by this whole premise of a grass sea essentially and I'm you know like I am really hoping that we're gonna get awesome like grass creatures and like I talked to a cat about this and she's like wouldn't it be cool if there's like a you know a grass crack in so yeah like yeah that would be awesome I'm really hoping that that's the case then we get to the last portion of this which are the mystery and thrillers the first one i'll talk about here is the lady upstairs by hallie sutton so this came in the december i think unplugged book box and basically our main character's job is black making blackmailing horrible men she's trying to prove herself to her co-worker and their enigmatic enigmatic boss known as the lady upstairs so she takes on bigger riskier jobs until one of her targets ends up murdered so i guess she's trying to escape the the consequences of this failed job and she was like, okay, I'll, I'll take on one more sting and she's going to do it behind the boss's back. But I think, you know, she learns that her coworker and this lady have secrets of their own and no woman is safe when there's a life-changing payout on the line. So I actually haven't heard of this before, but this seems really intriguing and I also just like the covers. The next book I'll talk about is I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick. So look at the blue pages. That's also really awesome. So Barnes & Noble had this for half off and, uh, you know, I've been enjoying YA thrillers this month for whatever reason. And, you know, this is definitely a YA thriller. So we have our main character arriving at a small village to be like a summer nanny and is wanting a fresh start. But I guess the community is on edge after the disappearance of Zoe Spanos, who's a local girl. And uh, this main character, I think, bears a, an eerie resemblance to this missing girl. So it's stirring up a lot of feelings about this unsolved case. Our main character gets deeper into the mystery and is becoming convinced that she and this missing girl are connected somehow. And then two months later, I guess Zoe's body is found in a nearby lake. Anna, our main character, is charged with manslaughter, but the confession is riddled with holes. And the teen host of the Missing Zoe podcast isn't really satisfied. And so we're trying to figure out what's going on. So I think there may be some mixed media formatting in here. Yeah, it looks like it. So it seems like a fun, you know, summer thriller type book. And again, you know, like I've been really enjoying that this month, so I just wanted more of that. The next book I'll talk about is The Dead Season by Tessa Weggert. So this is the second book in the series, and we follow a senior investigator who was had been like abducted by a serial killer. And so she wanted to get a fresh start in upstate New York after, you know, leaving the NYPD, but this you know serial killer who abducted her has other plans they share a hometown and he won't let her forget this the sort of decades old skeleton of our main character's estranged uncle is uncovered and the serial killer issues a challenge to return home and solve the cold case or the next blood he spills will be on her hands so she's trying to you know solve this murder and realizes how little she remembers of her childhood and so the serial killer is um, impatient and kidnaps again. So then like, you know, she has to solve these clues that only she can understand and play this game. So, you know, I really enjoyed the first one. It seems kind of like a close circle murder mystery type vibe on an island. And there were definitely like a lot of tidbits left throughout about her past. And I was like, I remember at the time of reading it being like, ooh, this is like really intriguing. I want to know more about it. So. You know, this came out, I think, in December, so, you know, like, I definitely want to continue the series and see what happens. And then the last book I'll talk about today is Shiver by Allie Reynolds, and this also just came out. So this, I think, is a closed circle murder, murder mystery in the French Alps, and they're, like, stranded in a remote mountain resort during a snowstorm. This group of friends, old friends, have forged a bond on this mountain years ago uh, when they were training for an elite snowboarding competition. So they arrive for this reunion and can tell like something is wrong. You know, the resort is des deserted, the cable cars have stopped working, so, and their cell phones are missing. So there's an icebreaker game designed to draw out their secrets to remind them, I think, also of this 
sixth member of their group who vanished the morning of their competition years ago and has been long presumed dead. The author is actually a former freestyle snowboarder, which is really fun. And like I, when I first talked about this in my new releases video, I had mentioned, you know, that I actually used to ski race myself and the author and I kind of chatted on Twitter about this a little bit. So, you know, I'm really excited to read this. I've heard really great things about it. Like, again, I love close circle murder mysteries. I love, you know, this setting of like, cold snowiness. Those are all the books that I have to show you today in my book haul. This turned out to be longer than I expected, but you know, these things happen. So let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. For your question of the day, have you received any books recently as presents or just picked up some some books for yourself just because? I do have a Discord channel if you want to join that. The link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.